Welcome to the Investor Coaching Show. Here's your host, Paul Winkler. And hey, welcome. This is the Investor Coaching Show, and I'm Paul Winkler. Solo for just a little while, till the fellers get here. A little traffic going on out there, a little accident activity. I got my producer. I got like three producers today. <laughs> I got Mason, Mason, new guy. New guy? Yeah, he's, he's training under Leviticus. He's over there. Oh, cool. Yeah, Leviticus cool, cool. is over there. Yeah, and Nick's here, of course. And we all made it on time over here. I know you guys. Well, you know, you didn't have an accident right near your office. Well, that's true. I share some little grace on them. But anyway, so one of the things that I thought I would start off with is I had heard this guy's presentation, and I wish I could remember the guy's name, but he was talking about the phases of retirement. And I thought this was brilliant. This is really good stuff because we do see this quite often with people going into retirement. And I've told this story before, but it bears repeating where I had this one guy, he was a professor and he says, Hey, you know, you need to be really super careful about working with people in retirement planning because, hey, they have never been there before and they're going into a phase of their life they have never been through before and it's really kind of scary. And he says, and just keep in mind that you've never been there either. <laughs> and you know, just be very, very conscious of that. And you know, the thing is, is it's so true. You know, even though I have picked up, you know, eight different financial planning designations and a lot of it on senior living and those types of things. It is, it's, you know, you learn about it and you can get book knowledge, but actually doing it is a whole different deal. So this guy was a retired guy and he's talking about the four phases of retirement and what you can expect. And he says, Hey, look, you know, you might spend a third of your life in retirement. I mean, think about that. You are going to be there for quite a while. Uh, good, good shot as long as you live long enough. And he says, you know, right now we're dealing with baby boomers. Baby boomers have changed everything that they've ever touched. I mean, literally when it came to when they were babies, it was diaper sales. Then, then it came to bike sales later on as they learned how to ride bikes. And then it came to college. And if you look at, at the advertising you know, then it was college. Then a little bit later on, they were getting married. And, and then, you know, you saw a lot of the advertising changing to newlywed couples as they got to that age. And it was just this huge cohort of people that were all born in like 1946 into up to 19. It was, it may have been a little bit earlier than that, but it's like up to 64 was the very, very last year of the baby boomers. And now what's going on is now they're retiring. And they're retiring at the clip of 10,000 people a day. Yes, 10,000 people a day for like the next 10 to 15 years. And they're not the end of it. I mean, literally, then we go forward and we'll have millennials in the future. So it's not like, oh, we're going to lose all these people. And, that, and that's, you know, after these people retire, then everything's going to go away. There's going to be a new group of people. So, you know, people say, hey, they're going to crash the stock market because they're going to be selling out of their investments. No, they're not. Uh, they're actually retaining their investments and only selling a little off at a time and living off of it. But what's happened is anytime anybody owns a stock and sells it to somebody else, there's a buyer on the other end and it'll be younger people. And then the next co the cohorts coming up are just as big, if not even bigger in some cases than the baby boom generation. But needless to say, you've got a lot of people that are going into retirement. And one of the questions he said, you know, we were all talking, a bunch of senior citizens, we're all talking. And he said, the question we all had was this, how do you squeeze all the juice out of retirement was the question. You know, so how do you get the most out of this thing called retirement when you're not working anymore? And he says, you know, there are phases that you go through. The first phase, he said, is kind of like a vacation. Yeah, you know, because you stop work and then you don't have to get up in the morning you know, so what you end up doing is, hey, whatever you want, you know, so you can go do whatever. There's no routine. You can relax. You can go out and have fun. You go out to dinner. You hit the golf course and you do whatever you want to. But he says, here's the thing. And this is what I've heard so many times from people. It loses its luster. After a while, you just go, is that all there is? Is there anything else to that? I'm bored. I'm not challenged. And some people, what they do is they just turn around and go right back to work. 
or maybe they go into consulting or they do something else at that particular phase is because you know really we need routine as humans we are just designed you know i've talked about this we call it cognitive crisis and cognitive crisis is where you have this instinctive way of taking action you've used your entire life for your success and then all of a sudden it's gone and now you have nothing going on so the first phase is it's like a vacation like a really really long vacation matter of fact we talked about that before you know when when retirement we think it's just money oh it's just you know investing properly and it's just state estate planning and you know the reality of it is that is typically how the investing world sees it and approaches it and one of the things that i think is really to the credit of the industry you know the certified financial planners last year last february actually added psychology to the curriculum which i think is really really critical now and that's one of the things that we've seen for 20 years and hence the reason that i decided to go shoot off and, and work on a master's in it is because of the fact that people really do struggle with this thing called retirement and how to deal with and you know relationships because a lot of times you're working you're working 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 all of a sudden you're around more and now you're trying to figure out how to do relationships again because you really hadn't done especially guys right you know women tend to be a lot better at relationships let's face it guys not so good so hence what happens is we end up going into retirement not really knowing how to do things and more about that in just a second so then what happens is this you get into phase two and this is where you just feel lost I don't know what to do with myself. I'm so sick of this long vacation. I got to have something else. So you have this lost feeling. And what you lose is you have lost routine. You've lost identity because your work gave you identity. You know, a lot of people, a lot of us, you ask, hey, hey, so, you know, tell me about yourself. What's the first thing you lead with? What you do for a living, right? Oh, I'm a dentist. Oh, I'm a podiatrist. Oh, I'm a, an attorney. I'm a, you know, whatever. And your identity is gone once you retire. Now, the next thing you lose is relationships because, like I said, especially guys that don't tend to be that great. And many of their relationships are where? At work. You know, so they have friends and most of their friends are somehow attached to what they did for a living. And then that's gone and you leave the workforce and then all of a sudden you come back and you go hey you know i just want to come and say hi to you guys and they're like who are you you know it used to be who's who but it's now who are you <laughs> this is what it ends up being right now the next thing is you lost a sense of purpose many times because a lot of times our sense of purpose is wrapped up in our work and what we do and how we add value in people's lives and then you end up with a loss of power because maybe your job had prestige. Maybe it's something that you did that had, you know, and you were maybe a leader in the company or you were the person that was calling the shots or, you know, you had people under you that were coming to you and asking for advice on things and you lose that. And what ends up happening is you have, you know, sometimes it's divorce. You know, sometimes what happens is people come back and, and you have, we call it great divorce. And when they come back home and all of a sudden you're around too much and maybe some of the things that were irritating that you would do are around all the time now <laughs> uh you know sometimes what it is 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 that you know you're around all the time and maybe some of the things that you used to be able to do at work you're trying to pull off on your spouse now <laughs> you know and it doesn't fly so well and then you get into decline and phase two typically ends with this I cannot continue this way. I can't go on like this. This has got to come to an end. I can't keep doing this. And because maybe that depression just gets you to go, and hopefully you don't go into a depression where you go into hiding and you don't go talk to anybody. A lot of people do that. They isolate because they think nobody wants to be around a person as miserable as me. So I'm just going to isolate. And then when you isolate, you become more miserable and people, 
would even want to be around you less. You, you, you basically surmise. So what happens is for the person that's healthy, they go, wait a minute, it doesn't have to be this way. I can, I can, I got to do something different. And then you get into phase three. And a phase three in retirement is this, it's trial and error. And the question that you're asking, it's, isn't this the key to life? It's not necessarily having all the answers. It's asking the right questions. And the question is, is this, how can I make my, 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 my life meaningful? What can I do? How can I contribute to the world? And usually the answer comes down to a lot of times people go into something totally, totally different from what they did when they were working. And that's okay if you happen to have skill in those areas, but you might want to look at some of the things that you already do well, things that you already have a lot of knowledge. And I've talked about this before. You go into this crystallized knowledge. You know, you're, in the early years of your life, it's fluid intelligence. And that's, you know, you're taking information, bringing it in. And what you're doing is you're trying to figure out uh, how to solve problems, how to create new things. And, and you're really good at that when you're younger in life. But as you get older, what ends up happening is what takes that place is crystallized intelligence, which is wisdom. It's the things that you've picked up. What have you, you know, the trial and the things that you've tried in your life, you know, you had failures, you've had successes. And what you can do is now make better decisions because let's face it, when we go through bad junk, we learn things and that's the key. So what happens is at this stage of life, you're going, what do I like? What do I love doing? Where do I get lost? You know, for example, as far as I lose track of time, I'm having so much fun. I'm losing track of time. That's a really good key to figure out what it is that you do well. What is it that you're just like, oh, man, this is so much fun and I can't learn enough about it. And you want to continue to learn about it. Or you want to continue to grow. That's a really good key on things that you might want to be doing in retirement. And what do you do well? What are you really skilled at? Because let's face it, when you're doing what you do well, you're blessing other people. You're really helping other people. Because other people don't do the stuff that you do well. A lot of times we think, oh, everybody can do this. No, not everybody can do it. You are really good at something. And, you know, the reality of it is other people aren't. Now, the, 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 the thing you can run into here is disappointment and failure can happen at this point. And the guy tells his story. It's funny. He says, you know, I was on this condo board and he was, I, was, I was getting yelled at all the time. And it's just getting yelled at all the time. I'm on this condo board and I'm like going, trying to help out in the condo association. And he goes, we decided that we were going to change from daffodils versus daisies one year. And he says, and all of a sudden people are yelling at me. And, you know, you, you just they get all worked up because everybody wants control. It's just silly, but that's the way people are, isn't it? And you, you may try new things that don't work. But the question you want to ask yourself is what makes you want to get up in the morning? What's really kind of like, man, I can't wait to get up and do this. Because that's what you want. Because a lot of times when people get depressed and they get down, what they do is they sleep too long. And typically they're sleeping too long because they don't have anything to get up for. And when you sleep too long, it worsens things. You feel even worse because you overslept, right? I mean, that's just basically what's going on. And then phase four, if you can get here, this is the deal. This is the deal. This is where you reinvent and you rewire yourself. And what you're looking for is a mission. You know, and it's usually service to others. That's where the mission comes in. This is where you're looking for other people to serve. An example is you had this group of people that had a big sign up. It was the old coots. <laughs> bunch of guys, bunch of retired guys sitting around. It's like, you know, you remember Peanuts and Lucy had the booth, you know, advice, five cents or something like that. <laughs> she had that little. Well, that's what these guys were. They had a big sign and they had a booth, you know, advice, five cents. And he says, you know, it was funny because the sign said, old coots, free advice. Probably bad, but it's free. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, what a hoot. Uh, you might be teaching golf. You might have book clubs. You might have different games. You might have film clubs. And what happened was this. All of the losses that they suffered. Like their routine. Now, guess what? They had routine again. It was back. 
Then they had purpose back. And, you know, there's, there's a reason for being. And then they had power back because, you know, they had, you know, not power in the negative way, but power in just that they were empowered to do things to help people. And they had a sense of purpose and, and they had a sense of identity again. And then, of course, what else did they get back? They got back relationships. And that, I think, those four steps to retirement, man, I'll tell you what, that right there, I think that is huge. It's a huge key to having success in retirement. 